Hi, everybody. Hope you are not sleeping already. So today I'm going to talk about NGRIG schematics. This is the story how to get more productive when you are implementing NGRIG on your application. So before we start, I'm going to take some notes about myself. So for, I'm front-end developer for the last five years, but for the last two years, I'm used NGRIG schematics to build, uh, to build big, enterprise-grade applications. Also, I used to be a mentor on NGGIL's events. I have few open source projects. And at my teenage years, I used to play on my own rock band. So guess who this young man on this picture? <laughs> it's crazy, but this picture was taken 13 years ago. And music is about creativity. You're writing your own songs, playing concerts, and so on. But how it's related to programming? And the answer is that programming is also about creativity. It's creating your own components, thinking about your architecture, design patterns, and so on. But before we, you can play a concert and entertain people, you should do boring setup before. You should plug all wires, set up your guitar, provide sound check, and with programming we do the same thing. We set up our build system, our CIs, provide basic uh, boilerplate code, and so on. And what schematics are? This is the tool that will help you to reduce boilerplate code and have more time to implement your own business logic. When we are speaking about NGRX, we are used to create our store, reducers, effects, actions, containers, and we're doing it once and once again, and again and again and again. It's boring, isn't it? One way to solve this problem is to create some abstraction layer on top of your uh, NGRX tools. For example, you can provide some factory to create uh, action creators or build some reducer creators. But any abstraction has its own price. It comes with a price that uh, you increase the time people get involved into your project. And with that, you increase the whole development time. Uh, and helpfully, we can split our task into two categories. Boring and creative. Creative one is about our design, architecture, uh, reusable API, and so on. On the other hand, boring is about configuring your webpack config or GAL. Personally, I can spend one day to tweaking uh, my webpack configuration. How many of you can write webpack config without seeing the docs? Raise your hand. Uh, is there Sean Larkin? <laughs> I think only he can do it. Yeah, really. And when we are speaking about people and, hum uh, and machines, uh, probably humans are better in creative tasks, at least for now, when we haven't get machine learning enough to do that. On the other hand, machines are better on some tasks that go on once and once again. Then won't be exhausted, and you should remember that robots don't cry. And Angular team provides us with this great tool called Angular CLI. You can create your whole application with it, and all needed pieces like components, directives, pipes, and services. And all this stuff was uh, extracted from Angular CLI into a separate project called Schematics. You can install Schematics CLI with Yarn or NPM uh, using Yarn at NGRX uh, uh, Schematics CLI. So what actually Schematics do? Let's think about our file tree 
uh, files uh, tree, like a state, our code state. And we're passing it to schematic. Schematic, in this case, some kind of reducer. You pass in your files, and schematic return you new state. Updated files, create new files, remove something, uh, or whatever. And we as developers, some kind of side effect to this file state. Uh, Narval team provide us with great tool called NGRX schematics. And they, they allow you to create your actions, stores, reducers, and features with handly CLI commands. So how we can use NGRX schematics? The best way to try something, write some code, make your hands dirty. But what kind of application we can create? Uh, maybe to-do list app. We usually show in examples on to-do list apps. Or when we are speaking about Redux, NGRX, we think about counters. Every day's work, you probably create some counter to increase and decrease numbers, isn't you? So the answer is not. We are used to get some data, transform it, and show to the user. That's it. So we're going to create Star Wars knowledge base. <laughs> it should look like this. So it's simple application with cards with information about Star Wars heroes, like uh, name, uh, date of birth, height, weight, so on. For that, we're going to use to material design to don't be aware about components, buttons, colors, and so on. And uh, I'm going to use Swapy API. This is open source Star Wars database that available for free without any registration, SMS, and so on. So. Uh, how we can scaffold our application? Of course, I'm going to use Angular CLI. So I create a new application, uh, passing the engine U. I call this SWKB, that stands for Star Wars Knowledge Base. I create providing some prefix for all my components and directives, and usually I'm using SCSS for styles. Then I'm going to create our feature module to separate concerns and uh, in the future easier to extend our application. So uh, next I'm going to add material design with its dependency, component dev kit, and I'm generating components list uh, of heroes and component for each hero. And at the end I'm generating service to have some handy methods to fetch data from Star Wars API. So that was good, but we need to add NGRX to our application. And to do so, we need to set up at least uh, all required uh, packages for a whole platform the, for NGRX schematics. So we're going to install store effects, entities, or dev tools, and schematics itself. Next, really important thing, we're going to set up NGRX collection as default one in our Angular CLI config. To not to specify collection every time we're going to use any schematic from this collection. So we're initializing our store using ng-generate store schematic name, and we name our root state as state. <laughs> Then we specify a root argument and pass in the name of module when we're going to set up our root store. Then we're going to do the same for our effects, root effects. So we pass in ng generate effects called app, and it will generate app effects for us. Next, we're going to run feature. Uh, initialization with NGRX schematics. And feature is just alias for three schematics, action, reducer, and effect. So you just run one uh, schematic, and it set up whole stuff for you for this feature. And we specify that we're going to use our 
feature reducer inside a uh, whole root reducer, providing the path to this reducer. So let's look what we got at this point. So we have in root module set up our store with our reducer, meter reducer. We got store dev tools uh, initialized on dev mode. And at the end, we got effects module set up. If you look in our reducer, we will see that um, schematic at import of our feature reducer inside core reducer uh, implements the interface for our state and has a reducer's map for us. Then, inside this feature module called Heroes, we have effects module set up for this particular uh, feature. So, that's awesome. <laughs> Let's celebrate it. <laughs> we are done. Should we celebrate? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's look, for example, on our hero's action file. What we got? Mm, in general, really nothing. We got dummy action type, which hero's action, and simple action with just type identify. But to fetch data, we need three kinds of uh, actions. Fetch that will trigger our fetching process. Fetch success callback to map our data to the store and fetch uh, error action if something going wrong. So how we can make it better? How we can use schematics for that? We can extend NGRX schematics to build our own template for fetch actions. So, and to do schematics, set up schematics, we should use schematics. This is some kind of circular dependency, like robots making robots. <laughs> so to create custom schematic, first of all, we're going to set up a schematic CLI globally. And schematic CLI provides us with this handy command called schematics. Then we're going to specify template for our new schematic. that called schematic. So schematic, schematic, and then we pass in our uh, schematic collection name. In our case, it will be fetch actions. Then we're going to move to our newly created folder, set up all dependencies with YARN or NPM, and then we are adding injury schematics as dependency because we're going to use uh, their code base and just uh, provide our own template for our schematic. So what is the structure of every schematic? The main file for each collection is called collection JSON file. And Angular DevKit schematic provides us with handy schema for this JSON file. And you got all auto-completion for your uh, schematic in IDE. So next, we're going to specify our only one uh, schematic that we're going to use in this collection. It's called fetch actions. Then we're going to provide alias for this schematic. In our case, it be FA. Description, it will be used in help, uh, when we type in help in CLI. And two main files next. Factory file that uh, grabs all arguments from CLI, parsing them, transformer, and passing to our templates. And schema. Schema stands for uh, specify all types of our arguments. What uh, arguments are required? Uh, description for each argument. Such kind of documentation. So main file, our factory for our schematic. In our case, I just copy pasted uh, factory from NGRX action schematic to just reuse it, because I want just to change templates for it. But uh, uh, in general, this schematic factory is just a function that returns to a rule how to change our file system. So we parse in our arguments and passing them to templates. Also here we are filtering templates if a user specify spec 
Boolean argument, we're going to uh, create a spec file for them. If not, we're going to do nothing. So let's look on file structure. In our fetch actions, we created folder called files. And inside this folder, we have all our templates. Even fol folders could be templates for us. And what I'm going to focus here, we have this special syntax, like underscore, underscore, variable name, underscore, underscore. So, for example, we have pass variable. And this pass variable will be transformed to pass that we specify as an argument. It will create all necessary folders if something not exists. Uh, then, even we can do more. If we provide a flat argument, we can generate subfolder optionally. And we are passing name argument to the function, helper function, called dasharize to create a nice dashorized name that we use usually for files. And we're going to do the same for our action file and action specification file for tests. So let's look on our template. I added HTTP error response uh, interface for our uh, fetch error action. And then I'm going to define our uh, fetch action types. So we create fetch action, fetch success action, and fetch error action. And all of them will be prefixed by name we specify as an argument when we go going to run this uh, schematic. Later on, in this template file, we creating three action created classes for each of our action. And later on, we uh, expose the alias type to use on our reducer and so on. So we are going well, but before we can publish our schematic and expose it to the world, we need to test it. And to test it, first of all, we need to build our schematic. Our generated schematic will have this build script for us, and we're just running it. Then we can use npm link or yarn link to link our newly created package to uh, our local storage before we publish it on npmjs.org. And then we can uh, test our uh, schematic on real project. So we create some project, in our case it's servers knowledge base. And we're gonna to generate our a fetch action. So we call in for ng generate, uh, then we uh, provide a collection name, that's in our case fetch actions. And with these uh, dots, we uh, call in also the name of schematic from this collection. In our case, I used alias fa, but we can also use full name fetch actions, so it could be fetch action, fetch action. And as an argument, I'm passing the name of our uh, fetch actions and pass to them. So it will create our actions inside heroes feature module. After that, we can run and uh, see the result. Uh, also, uh, and, uh, Angular schematics provide us with a bunch of helper methods to test our schematics, but I want to get deep in this topic now. So that's all I have. Uh, get creative with your schematics and feel yourself like playing your own rock band. Thank you.